Hello, my name is Brittany D. I am a psychic medium and spiritual teacher. My divine purpose is to assist in the expansion of the collective consciousness and to help you become more connected with the divine. This is a space to remember all that you truly are and ignite the possibilities of your highest potential. Hello, 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 guys. Thank you, thank you so much for being present with us in this current now moment. Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited already because I have Miss Mary Beckman on the podcast this week. She is a psychic medium intuitive channel. Did I say that correctly? Psychic medium healer channel? Healer channel. (laughs) Okay, she's a healer channel, psychic medium healer channel. And that doesn't even begin to sum up the magic of this woman. (laughs) But I'm so excited to have her on here. Um, I just, I absolutely love Mary. I've had a beautiful journey, you know, just in knowing her and witnessing her. I, I'm just really, really excited to bring her to you all. And I really hope that you follow her work and that you get attentive to what she's bringing into this world. Cause it really is truly, really, really powerful. Um, so thank you so much, Mary, for being here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm I'm really happy to be here too. I was looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah, it's so wonderful. Just to connect you and I and then also have you on here is wonderful too. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, guys. So Mary just published, is it your first book? Mm-mm, it's oh. my fourth book. Oh my gosh, of course it is. Mary just published her fourth book, um, the first book that I'm aware of. Um, so I'll have to go check out the others. Um, but I'm really, really wanting her to share with us about this book. I, so I'll tell you, Mary, I immediately, whenever I saw you, you know, that you published your book, I went and purchased it. And then, um, I have been, I've been reading, I really like to complete my books whenever I begin them. I really like try and stay disciplined with that. Cause there might be something else. Even if I get bored with it, there might be something else later that's good, you know, meant for me. And so I've noticed that I'm like, I'm like, tr- like starting to rush myself through the book that I'm reading right now. Cause I want to get to yours <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, let's just be present. Like, let's finish this book. Hers is next. It's okay. But I'm so excited that I noticed myself trying to rush through it. So, um, I haven't personally really dove into it. I I'm ready to read it. It's my next in line. It cut in line in front of all the other ones. Um, but I would love for you just like as if someone had never been exposed to your work or your books or anything, give us the best kind of like summary and we'll go more into depth, but just kind of the best summary of what this book, the life of the life of your energy is what it's called. Correct. The art of your energy, the art of your energy. That's correct. Yeah. Um, Yeah. If you could just give us like an overview and then we'll kind of go more into depth. Cause even just looking through it, I was like, this is so informative. Um, so I'm sure, sure there's so much for you to share with us, but just give us a, a little overview of, of this book and what all it's offering to the world. Okay. So my other books were written on um, sort of obscure diseases. So no need to find those. <laughs> Uh, so this was my fourth one, and Guidance told me uh, about a week ago that I'm all ready to go to the next one. And so my next one I'm pretty excited about, completely different. But this is The Art of Your Energy. It's a pink book with an angel on it. Oh, and so the beautiful. whole title is uh, Galactic and Celestial Light Coats for Healing and Empowerment. So what I thought I was writing, because you know how spirit works, we mm-hmm. think it's one thing and it, sometimes it's not. I just thought I was writing a metaphysical book. And they kept saying, keep going, just write about whatever you want to write about. Just keep going, no problem. Then I was, um, I was so lucky to take a class uh, called um, Connecting with Your Writing Guides. I can't remember what it was called exactly. And I had connected with my writing guide prior to that, knew who he was. Kind of he'd been giving me a little bit of instruction. But once I connected with the two guides I would be working with on this book, it was, it just came it's out. over, yeah. It just mm-hmm. was, yeah, it was just done. And I was sitting in a, um, a Reiki class, uh, Karuna and Holy Fire Reiki, uh, a little over a year ago, I guess it was. This is with Kelly. And uh, with Kelly yeah. Herbert, yeah. Mm-hmm. And she came from Michigan to teach this class. And I was lucky to be one of them in there. And I suddenly knew what the heck I was seeing. I was seeing light codes Mm -hmm. and I didn't know that. And I also knew this book was like Reiki 
and that these codes needed to come out of me into humans and then be passed on so that it's not mine anymore. They used to be mine, but now they belong to everybody. So I had to understand what were the codes, what do they do, how to explain it, which was not that easy. So I went through all of my writing. I had like a bunch of these little, you know, these little cheesy books, right? I have millions of them. Mm -hmm. And I had to find where were all the quotes from my guides and what did they say over the last few years? So I had maybe three or four years of writing. I had to condense it down. It wasn't as hard as my book where I interviewed 8,000 people about fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. That was hard because we had to get everything exactly right. This was just me, me and my guides. What were the guides going to say? How were they going to put it together? And then through my writing guide, who was very specific, uh, I was able to understand, here's what I need to do. Not until practically the 11th hour when I was getting ready to put the book, to send the book over to be uh, to the publisher for editing, that was when I knew how to use the codes. Wow. That's when they told me how to get them out of my body into somebody else. And then I had to practice because those somebody else's were the teachers. So I was so lucky to have uh, three or four people who allowed me to practice. Mm-hmm. And, the, and right away, Holy Ones just said, this is how you do it. And no problem after that. It was so in- interesting. It's very Reiki-like in the way that it's it's passed. Mm-hmm. And so they told me, you need four hours to adjust the energy up. And then the next day, four hours to learn to work the codes. Well, that's because it's 2021. Back when I was writing, the energy wasn't so, right? And so they had to not only get my energy up with me to teach me how to do this, they had to teach me how do the codes all work together. And right now there's 38 of them. Originally, there's 33 of them. So they've been giving me the new ones, which are really cool, which contain abundance. And abundance is the one that people are really excited about because a lot of abundance has been coming to people who I've been playing around with to give them the codes. Right. So I was so lucky that after I met you, I'm, and, you know, we met Ann Mukherjee at the same time. And mm-hmm. Ann and I established that Facebook group called uh, Hands of Light. Yeah, yeah. And so some of the people on Hands of Light were willing to take these codes and see what happened. Because I wasn't going to put it out there if it didn't work. And it works beautifully. Ugh. So they are healing, empowerment, and abundance codes. But will there be more? Yeah, there's probably a lot more. That's actually not what my next book is about. My next book is, is about uh, uh, becoming shaman. Oh, and so wow. it's, that's how, you know, how spirit works. I mean, you just think you're one thing and then they knock you in the head and like, poof, you're something else, right? Which you were always, you were always, but you didn't know. <laughs> right, right. Because you're all of it, right? Yeah. We are mm-hmm. all of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we are all of it. And we've been all of it 30 million times. We just don't know. Right. So I just, I, I guess I would just tell everybody out there that uh, most people have a book in them. And so ask for your writing guide. It makes things a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so just to be, just to create some clarity here, you're as, so as I read the book, cause I can definitely speak for myself cause I know I'm about to read it. It's up, coming up next and I'm really excited. That is how I received the codes or I received the knowledge. And then I would go to you for a training to receive the codes. Yeah. People have to learn how to use them because okay. I tell everybody the whole story and the whole book, like everything I know actually is in there except for what they told me in the last little bit. I know. I was um, reading over it. I was like, I feel like this is her whole like life metaphysical, like overview summary. It was. <laughs> it kind of was. And I didn't know I was doing that either. So it, it kind of is. It's everything I actually know, because there are a lot of people out there who say, oh yeah, that's my, that's my thing. I don't believe it. I think it's all everybody's thing. Yes. And actually I do believe everybody can do this type of work and lots of people have codes. They all just look different. Mm-hmm. That's what sort of stumped me for a little bit because my codes don't look like anybody else's. They don't look like those gorgeous pieces of incredible drawings that people get. Oh. It's very, you know, and they don't look like that at all. They look okay. like little icons. Because remember back in the day when McDonald's was actually decent food? So right. back in the day, you could see that little M and maybe you might think, oh, I'm going to have some of those French fries. So these are icons that make you feel a certain way. And when I can get them into you, you're going to heal. You're going to become empowered in so many ways. And then you are going to have abundance. You're going to be able to entrain your heart and mind together, which is so important in 2021. You're going to be do, able to do all kinds of stuff. Now, are people all ready to do that? No, but it kind of gives it an in. And if you're totally ready and the timing is there, it's going to go down like you wouldn't believe. Slick as crazy. So what I do now is everybody on Hands of Light, I send these codes, every last one of them, 
two times a day, between two and four o'clock every day. Whoa. So I've had people text me and say, I got this money. I got this job. I, and just right out of the blue, all this stuff. So I know abundance is working. I know oh, and abundance is, is I, I'm amazed by the timing of this because abundance is a huge, finances in general is a huge theme of 2021. Like mm-hmm. I got so many downloads about, and that's why I created the abundance code because that was like my way of, you know, igniting that. It's huge over 2021. Um, it's just a massive theme and those that are ready to get down with it are going to see it pouring in and it's, you're going to be drenched, you know, um, if you, yes. if you really align and embrace with embrace it, it's just, I mean, it already is just massive, mind blowing, like next level stuff. Um, so whenever you said that you got those additional codes that were with the buttons, I was like, of course, of course, <laughs> like that makes total sense. <laughs> it, it is. It's just like somebody up there knows something, you know, it's like they're all in cahoots, yep. but, um, they're the heart, mind entrainment is really incredible for 2021, because if you're thinking through your brain, that's so 2018, mm-hmm. right? That's way back. I think through that. Even 2012, Mary. Yes, 2012. <laughs> Woo, gosh. Um, but like the other one is um, the 5G blocker or oh. att- attenuation code. Yeah, I was doing that a long time ago. But what the Holy Ones have done is they have put more oomph in it, right? Because of the sun. Right. right? So what they taught me was we're going to create this gigantic thing that has all to do with solar. And then we're going to jump in. It's like a battery and everything's going to go whoosh. So that's part of the work, too. Wow. Huh. Can you explain a little bit more about that? I haven't got any downloads about that. So it's like kind of coming at me fresh. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, everybody try looking around at that solar because you'll see everybody talking about solar. So last year, the solar flash. No. Okay. Okay. So what's going on is the sun is just like really incredibly there, and it's the biggest clearing thing ever. It's 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 the it's everything basically. So so what they told me is they said the great galactic suns pour through our portal sun because our sun is a portal. Right. Pours through our portal sun, comes down into us humans, comes through us, into the earth, and into the inner earth, linking with the inner earth sun. So it's a giant column of light as above, so below, okay? And then that was brought to me by the Arcturians, um, Ascended Master Kutumi, the Seraphim, and uh, Archangel Metatron. So basically, that is kind of my lineage. I'm star and stone. I come from the angels in the galactic. So... I didn't know this, you guys. That's the thing is I didn't know it. And it all freaking lined up. And it wasn't just me because I never believed me, right? The Holy Ones told me in writing, but also other people told me too. Mm. So then I started hearing solar, solar, solar all over the place. And, and a lot of people are getting that it's, it's the sun all day. And so um, really, that's a clearing thing. So once you stand in that column of light, all kinds of cool stuff can happen. Wow. Okay, so how do I do this? Just steal it, steal it from me. I just told you. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. So just call it in. Just say, okay. I call, I call it in. It's right there in the book. Somewhere. I just thought I'm a big permission person. <laughs> like, yeah. can I use this? How do I do this? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's so honorable. But um, I just think that uh, everything of mine is, is out there to be used, but I cannot give the, give the uh, way to pass the codes away because they told me not to. Okay. Because I said directly to my guides, is this for humanity? They said it's absolutely for humanity, but it's sacred and it's sacred like yeah. Reiki. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause Reiki, as you know, has, you know, plain regular Reiki does not have as much oomph as the Reiki that has come in recently. Yes. Right. But, um, master Usui, he's the one who figured this whole thing out and mm-hmm. he's probably on the other side going, you guys go. Right. Yeah. And so other people have developed all these Reiki courses and I was in the course getting the codes from someone when I heard yours is like that. And I was gobsmacked. I mean, my, my, my mouth was open. So then I had to learn, how do you do that? So last, let's see, two weeks ago, I had my very first class. And of course, didn't really know how that was going to go down because I like to know at the last minute, I don't like to do things that are not directly in front of me because otherwise that causes anxiety. Mm -hmm. Right. And so my whole life, I've been an anxious person. And uh, when I met you, I was anxious and I would never have gotten together in a retreat with people unless I pushed myself to do it. And it's one of the 
great things that I did that year. Oh, I'm so glad you did. We needed you there. (laughs) Is I, is I blew through that anxiety and learned to work with it. And so in order to not get anxious, I just do everything right in front of me. I'm yeah. going to do a podcast. Okay. I talk about the podcast that day. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do a class. I talk about a couple days before. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, believe to me. Not, I totally you know, understand. Yeah. <laughs> bring in all kinds of other stuff. And so I didn't really know how the class was going to go down exactly. So the night before I wrote the class and my guide said, it's from 10 to two at two, you're done. And you raise energy the first day because people's energy has to be at a certain level. And then the next day we learn how to manipulate the codes. So at about 2.03, we were done. It was like spirit was so on point. Wow. And, uh, and everybody said, yeah, wow, we can really feel that. And so then the next day they learned how to do codes. And one of my uh, students who's a, a dear friend of mine, she has really run with this thing. She actually asked 10 people in her life to um, work with her on the coast. She's learning how to really use them. And mm-hmm. other people have done the same thing. They've really been using them and they really like the system. So for me, I'm really happy because spirit told me this whole time that it was going to work. And it has. Is this something you can do at a distance? I feel so drawn to this. Is this something that you can do at a distance or do you have to come in yes. person? No, oh. it doesn't matter. So these classes are going to be over zoom just because it's easier right. for me right now. Yeah. Um, and then probably I'll have some live classes one of these days, but right now just in the essence, you know, just for, just yeah. for timing. Absolutely. It's easier to do zoom. So if I wanted, if I wanted to give you some, co- if you want me to later, whenever you want to today, if you want me to demonstrate how it works on you, I can send it to you. Okay. Yeah. I would absolutely love that. Be- because the soul, your your own higher self and your guidance talks to me through my higher self and guidance. Right. And they tell me which ones you need. Right. And then we just we just float them over there. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, well you I, I get what you're saying when you say that. I know that our, our higher selves are in communication. But for someone that maybe just heard that and was like, wait a minute, what are they talking about? Give your perspective. And I can give mine too, but give your perspective of what exactly that means. How are, sure. how, how, you know what I mean? Like, how are our higher selves interacting? How are they talking right now? So everybody allegedly has a soul, <laughs> which is <laughs> sort of, sort of pretty much in your body. So we all, we have a soul, right? Ish. And then we have aspects of ourself, a few of those, right? And then we have our inner child and we have uh, our higher self. So our higher self is outside the body, always has been with you forever, knows everything. Mm -hmm. So that's who I like to communicate. I don't really uh, communicate a ton with the human in front of me because the human will, they have to say, because that's your story. Mm -hmm. And your story is what in 2021, we're ditching to the curb, Mm -hmm. right? And higher self, if you say, hey, higher self, you run my show, your life's going to change. So my higher self is going to chat with your higher self. And every once in a while, I may see souls that are departed, or maybe I'll see your guides or whoever. Um, and we just have a chat. And then higher self says, hey, I need number five, number nine, and number 13. And then I send those to you and you can feel them. Usually people can feel them. Now, when people can't feel them, it's because they're thinking so much. Oh, okay. They're not present with the receiving. Yeah. Yes. So that would be, that's in essence, it not present for the receiving because of a bunch of stuff. It could be, could be anything, could be trauma, could be, um, just their, I don't know. They could be a Gemini. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a busy brain. It's a busy brain. And generally by the end of a reading with me, that is able to be really shown up to the person as to how, how do you overthink? And if you can figure out how you can overthink, you can help yourself. Now, does the brain ever not think? No, not really. <laughs> um, and so you, you could say all day, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop that overthinking. Well, you kind of can't. You have to just work with it. You have to settle your chili down, right, and do some stuff. And so I have two lists that I send people of just the basic stuff to do every day to understand why do they feel not so great. Okay. And then a question that came up in my head was like, what is the best way to receive these codes? Like, obviously you don't want to be sitting there thinking and anxious about, you know, blah, 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 and distracted and this and that. But is there any, you know, I mean, I'm sure a meditative state would be great, but is there anything that you recommend if someone was to receive these codes from you or for myself, what is the best way to receive? 
Well, I've done um, groups of people with these codes, you know, live and, and on Zoom and over the phone or whatever. And um, it's, they seem to work no matter what. Okay. So okay, they okay. seem to by, by, bypass an overthinker if you're in timing for it, right? Because you may be a resistant overthinker. So let's just say you're a resistant overthinker. Let's just say you're an Aquarius like me. Okay. So my thing I had to overcome this lifetime was that I was stubborn. I stubbornly thought I knew something and, <laughs> you know, we have to, we have to know we don't know a darn thing. Yeah. And we have to be total, totally open to learning all kinds of new things all day long to not be resistant. Right. And so if you're really resistant, like the people who are going crazy in my neighborhood right now, that'd be resistance right there because there are many people who have um, done some pr- uh, pretty crazy stuff, I'd have to say. And also the energy is up so freaking high right now that people are kind of coming undone if they're resistant to the energy. I just yeah. want to post on that today oh. because Holy Ones came came to me and said, because my friend and I were talking about this too. And I was saying, oh man, I've been going to write something about that for weeks. And what Holy Ones wanted me to do is just recap and say, um, if you are not in the flow, you're going to be having a harder time right now. Yeah. That's what I keep trying to tell people. Like, you know, I have family and friends and stuff that are, that are going through like trying times and things keep happening. And it's, and, and I just, keep, I'm like, you have to drop into the flow. It's not an option right now. It's mm-hmm. getting, we're being pushed into a place where it's not an option that if you keep that resistance, shit is going to keep falling apart. Like you're witnessing it. And these accidents happening and things coming up and one thing after another and da, 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 da. it's because you're resisting. And I'm like, please, you know, I'm talking to like my family and they don't understand all this stuff. And I'm like, please just drop into the flow. And I promise all of these trials and all these tribulations and all these things that are happening will, will just smooth out. And you just drop, it's because you're resisting <laughs> super hard. And luckily I got my mom on board. <laughs> And so she's pretty intuitive. So luckily I got her on board. And as soon as she got in the flow, she was like, oh my God, this is so much better. And she was like, it's kind of weird to watch them all. Like I'll just, I was like, yeah, 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 it is just like, let them, all you can do is just hold space, you know, and just let them walk through what they need to walk through. But until you give up that resistance, you're going to be going through it. It's just what it's how, in my opinion, it's how spirit is pushing us. To, to basically force us to let go of that resistance. We're going through a huge like turning point in the collective right now. And yeah, so that's absolutely true. You can't carry that resistance with you. It's, it's not, it's not optional anymore. You're being forced. <laughs> it just, it just, it just is what it, it, it I, I would, the, my, my little uh, opinion right there on that would be it's, it's power. It's actually not force. Yeah, that's it's true. Power. Yeah, it's power because spirit and celestial and terrestrial are simply power. Mm-hmm. And we're either going to jump in the stream or we're going to find ourselves a bulkhead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's just flow and it's just power. But the thing is, is people think it's anxiety. And they think everybody's, you know, they think people are against them or they get triggered all over the place. And triggering is, is this, is this wonderful thing. I mean, when you get triggered, there's your, there's your option to go after what caused that. So yeah, it's, it out. it's actually really exciting. Yeah. You know, but, so anyway, <laughs> not everybody sees it that way though, Mary, we're a little, I, I think about my family and like, just what, like I have one specific family member that's just I mean, he's on the resistance train like no other. And it's like every single day wakes up and it's another thing. And we're all just like, you know, having just holding space like, oh, but like, I just, I, not everyone sees it that way. I know you and I do, but not everyone sees that trigger as the gift that it really is. Oh, it's so potent. It's so good for us. It's such a gift for peace and for freedom and for liberation. It's a doorway. It's a key. <laughs> it, it, it is. It, it is. <laughs> but so have you had people get mad at you when you explain that? Well, for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty good with discernment. 
and I know if someone can handle that or not. Like mm-hmm. my mom, it was a little bit challenging. There was a little bit of resistance coming back towards me. And then whenever I finally, it was just, you know how spirit works. It was just so obvious that it was like, okay, you got to just let go. And so that was, she, you know, stepped into the flow and that was amazing and, and really, but most of them, I mean, I might say things here and there to try and help, but I'm like, hands up, man, this is your journey. You know, like I can't, I can't do it for you. And honestly, you'll probably get there a lot faster if I don't try. And if, if someone is welcoming it, like my, my mentorship and the people that I help, like if someone's welcoming it in, then absolutely. I will give you every ounce, squeeze me dry of information I can do to help you. But if, if it's someone just in my life that I know isn't really going to hear me and it's probably just, a waste of time and energy. Anyways, uh, those are most of the people that I feel like I would get resistance back from, you know, Mm -hmm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. good at knowing if, if it's actually going to be heard and ingested or if it's just kind of a waste of energy, you know what I mean? (laughs) I do. And that's the distinction that I hope everybody heard right there. That's the sweet spot because are you helping somebody because they ask for it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as long as it doesn't tear you down, bring you down, you have time for it and they're right in front of you, good mm-hmm. to go. If it's anybody over here, that's not your person. Yep. You yeah. Know? So I, I just, just, just thinking a long time ago, I used to get in trouble for all this kind of stuff. And uh, these days, slides right on by. Yep. Yep. And, that, <laughs> and I think too, like you said, you used to get in trouble all the time. Is like, I think my guide started getting on me too. So mm-hmm. that's why I kind of just started like just surrendering to like, I can't, I can't walk it for them. And sometimes I honestly, I would love your opinion on this, Mary. Sometimes I felt like I almost stalled the process or held up the show or kind of got in God's way whenever someone wasn't really trying, didn't really want that advice. And I would try and like step in and it was coming from a place of really wanting to help them. But I almost felt like I messed it up or something like I would mess up. I'm like, actually this works out so much better when you just walk through your process and I don't intervene. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's why a few months ago we started seeing posts about uh, it's not time to look at the gurus as we used to. It's time Mm -hmm. to look inside. Mm -hmm. Actually that's been being said for years but even more recently, yeah, because our our we actually have everything we need inside ourselves. Does that mean that I still don't need to ask people for help? No, I have people I ask for help all the time mm-hmm. because I can't see it exactly about myself. But what you're talking about there, I totally agree with you. Yeah, right. I feel like it can kind of. Inter- I'm like, that's God's job. <laughs> That's not me. Spirit, take it over. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. So real quick, I want to, I just want to get back to the book here. Cause I, I know I saw a lot. I didn't dive too deep cause I really like to just be fresh when I'm reading it. Um, but I know I saw like a lot of, um, diagrams and like, it was like almost like explanation, like almost like a, like whenever you said it was kind of an overview of all of your metaph- metaphysical knowledge, like it really, that really resonated. Cause that's what I felt when I was flipping through. I was like, Holy shit. Did she just give us everything in like one book? What the fuck? So, yeah, um, yeah I would love to tell love you to tell us a little bit more about like, what exactly are those teachings that are in there? What exactly do you cover? Oh uh, gosh. I, I cover how I found out some stuff about me. I found out my lineage. I found out my strengths. I found out what my, my gifts are. Cause they're not, you know, everybody gets a gift on your birthday. <laughs> we can all do this. Right. And so I, I went through, how did I know who I was? And then I got to the point where I say, then you just kind of chuck it out the window because right now you're a human on earth this time. So one thing I want to ask you is the screen is frozen. Does that bother anything? No, no, it's, it's totally okay. fine. Yeah. Okay, great. So I found out who I was, chucked it out the window. And then, of course, what happened this year is I found out something new. And that's why the book is the next book is coming out. So it never really quits. But when we get stuck in who we are, you know, I'm sure you've met lots of people who are they just do their work the same way they've done for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, there's constant growth coming in. And so humbly, I would put forth you know, take in that constant growth if you want to, because right now the sky is really the limit as to what the human brain can do, the human energy field can do. I just explain the human energy field. I explain how 
people's codes work. And of course they all work the way they have them work because they're own code, they're their own codes. So the beautiful photos that people put up on social media and say, let your heart open to that one. And son of a gun, you start feeling things. Yeah. That's their code. And so people can look at my codes, even though they look like a little icon um, and, and feel something too, because there's immense power in it. But it's what you do with that thing that makes all the difference. And believe me, I didn't know that either exactly. So um, as I go through the book, I explain uh, reincarnation, uh, past lives. I explain how to release some energy off of you if you've been slimed in lots of ways how to raise your energy so that doesn't happen, right? Mm-hmm. And how to um, just hack your, your bio field, basically your energy field, uh, to uh, set up for armoring so that you can go into, where would you want to go? The Home Depot. You can go into the Home Depot with lots of people and not feel slimed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's really important right now because a lot of people are pretty stirred up. Yep. You know, pretty stirred up. So it's important to have something to do. So what I give everybody after they have a reading with me, I also put it in the book, uh, the first one, not the second one. So the first one is just reunification codes and grounding, or excuse me, words, reunification and grounding words. So these are all the things you do every day, a couple times a day. And then this is questions to ask yourself if you do all of these things and you still feel terrible. So One thing I tell people is that if I get up and I feel really terrible, I just walk into my office and on my wall, I have my codes and I just wait for my guide to point them out. If I'm really feeling terrible, you know how it is when you you just don't feel good and you can't quite concentrate or you just have pain or whatever. And I can see him come in and go, you need number five, number nine and 14. And then would you please go to sleep (laughs) and drink some water? Yeah. And then I'll clear, I'll clear out. I'll clear out. And so um, there are pictures of the codes at the end. And I kind of give a little overview about what you do. I uh, don't say much about the class because you have to kind of come to the class, which I feel I was very ambivalent about that. When they first told me that I thought, why can't I just give them to everybody? And they said, because not everybody can do the adjusting of the energy first. Right. So that is four hours of energy work the first day. And like I said earlier, Holy is that shit. that, they got it. They totally got it. And we test energy over and over again. So what you have to have is a pendulum because that's something I've used for, you know, almost 20 years. And pendulum tests energy. Now, is it now a time to have all kinds of metaphysical tools? I don't care. I'm not going to chuck my rocks. People are like, you need to chuck all your tools. I'm not chucking my rocks, kids. There's no way. <laughs> they make me feel good. But the pendulum teaches other people what their energy looks like. So do I need to see that now? No, I can see your energy field easy. No problem. But, uh, but it's cool that people can see their energy and then they can start talking about what happened 10 years ago and you can see it fall. And that's really instructive too, because most people don't know that it's what's in their mind that makes them feel so crappy. Right, 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 right. Oh my gosh. Even just that little overview, Mari, Mary, that's so much information in that book. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Ugh. And, and even just to hear your perspective on like past lives and, um, you know, how you found out who you were and what light system, I'm guessing that's what, what uh, planetary system that you're connected to and all those. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's so cool. Thank you for sharing that with us and sharing that with the, I know sure. it's just what you were guided to do, but I really, I, we really do appreciate it. I'm excited to hear your perspective how long, just for the, for the viewers, and I'm also curious, how long have you been doing this work? Um, so around the time my friend got married, I know it's before that. So every time she has her anniversary, ah! she says, that, I'm like, oh, cool. I think it's like 19 years, 19 or 20 years. I started out being a Reiki person. That's what oh, I started with. Huh. And then my guide, my guide was Holy Mother Mary, who actually is my um, guardian angel, which, of course, I didn't know. And so um, then I started working with Clara Barton from the Red Cross. And so guidance told me, don't do anything but work with those guys. And then eventually started working with other people. I took a bunch of training. Um, I, I'm a Reiki master in Karuna and Holy Fire. And I'm also another type. I do another type of energy work. I don't do it anymore now that I have my own. But I basically learned my own. And so I worked with certain guides over the years, like boatloads of them. And then I realized through some help of a lovely healer that it was weighing me down because as you know, every guide has their own agenda. Mm -hmm. And 
if you work with a lot of them, that's a lot of agendas. And that's people would read me and they'd say, those are some boatloads of guys. Look at all those people. <laughs> and so I had to say, I love you all so much and I'm letting you go because right. I'm going to be a higher self channel. Yeah. And so the moment that I did that, it made a lot of difference. And then after about a month of feeling lonely and sorry for myself, finally my one guide came back and I was so happy to see him. And he, I call my companion guide um, because he's very famous and I don't say his name as much anymore. So I don't want to have any problem with that. Yeah. So um, this person is my uh, companion and he came back. And said, we're going to work together. And here you go. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and then now, of course, I still work with, you know, people that are galactics and archangels. And every realm has beautiful beings in there to help us. And so they're back if you ask them. Or sometimes they show up because of whoever I'm reading has that guide with them. But I just do it through higher self. It's a lot easier. I don't right. have to mess around. Right. Yes. Absolutely. That's how I am too. Higher self is just, is so much easier. It's, it's just a gateway. It is. <laughs> it is. It's a lot easier. <laughs> All right. But, so yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, but we had to teach ourselves to do it too. Yeah. 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 And that's why to, I want to give this information as much as, like, as much as we can here, because that was like going to be my following question was like, if someone is on here has never been able to connect with a galactic before Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we go higher self, but what, what could they, you know, from your perspective, what could they do if they have interest in that? Well, what I would say is just make sure that you get up in the morning and really armor yourself. So you want to call in the violet flame. You can call in your guides that you trust and you say something. Okay. So what I do is I just take a look at my energy field to make sure it looks as beautiful as I think it ought to. And then I armor with the I armor with the archangels. I armor, armor with the seraphim because that's my family, the seraphim. So I armor the heck out of myself. I make sure there's nobody in there with me, and that the one that's supposed to be in there with me is there. <laughs> okay. And then I set up all kinds of strongholds, which nobody's ever going to know because those are my strongholds. And as you know, we get slimed all the time, right? Right. It's general generally things like jealousy, which I think is the dumbest emotion I ever heard in my life. But then I'm an Aquarius. It's emotions. I love your emotions, but mine, you know, so we got all these emotions as, as humans, which can be lovely. That's why we're in a body or we wouldn't be in a body, right? right. We wouldn't be human. And so, um, uh, we get up in the morning and we armor ourselves and we make sure we're the best version of ourselves and drink a bunch of water and do some prayers and do some clearing. And then if we want to call somebody in, we would just make our space perfect. And within, within the field, we would humbly ask for our own family, our own, our own galactic family. Mm -hmm. Or if we want to speak with the archangels, you know, I mean, those archangels, what is it? One five hundredth of a second. Isn't that what Diane Cooper teaches? One five hundredth of a second before Archangel Michael is right there. I know. And so then I say, because I was taught by a really good metaphysical teacher, Derek Condit, he said, look at their heart field. Can they show you their heart field? And under universal law, they have to. So it's just like Superman, right? There they go. If it's not pink and juicy, out the door. Wow. Isn't that easy? I have never heard of that before. That is literally gold right there, guys. I hope that you heard that. I'm going to repeat that back because that <laughs> was gold. Because so is. many people, oh my gosh, I can't tell you the amount of people that ask me about protecting themselves and, you know, it, discerning energies and that kind of thing. And if you just tell them, what was it? You have to tell them to show their heart. Under universal law, they must show their heart. They have to prove who they are. Is it a big giant reptilian that would like to talk to you, which is not neither good nor bad sometimes. Okay. Right. Right. Um, do, do you wish to talk to a, a very angry somebody that looks angry and big? No, I don't think so. And so when you say, oh, show me your heart field, it, it should be nice. And for me, it's beautiful pink. Because right. if you look at Master Jesus or you look at uh, Archangel Michael, Holy Mary, um, some of the big galactics, those guys that I talk to all the time, nice, big, beautiful heart field. This is not my work. It's the work of Derek Condit of Mystical Wares, which is a place near us. And he has he's all over the YouTube uh, he talks about shungite and shungite honey and beekeeping and all that kind of stuff. But uh -huh. he's a very skilled metaphysical teacher and somebody I love to listen to about about um, the energy field. Because if you have if your energy field is stock full of love and that's what you're rocking, 
You're, that's golden right there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And nobody's going to slime you. And nobody's going to slime you if you love the crap out of yourself because it's nice and solid. If you love the crap out of yourself and you're all pink, then those big entities are going to, that's going to be like, I'm not even going to try it. It's like putting one of those things on your um, on your car steering wheel. What do you call that thing that makes your car steering wheel not move? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like that. When you love yourself so much, they can't get into your car. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I try and tell my clients this all the time, but I just want, I'm just going to like have them like listen to this little part and be like, listen, Mary, Mary said it too. <laughs> just love yourself to freaking death. And you don't have to, I mean, boundaries and protections are super important. I teach that to mm-hmm. every single one of them, but you don't have to worry. Like you said, you're calling it slime, but you don't have to worry about getting truded, whatever you want to call it nearly as much. If you freaking just radiate, if you are loving every single cell of your being, if it's all through your body, if it's all through you're being mm-hmm. out it's radiating outwards you that is your protection that is your protection <laughs> it, it really is and oh. and and uh there's a lot of ways that you can do your work invisibly if you are a mm-hmm. public person mm-hmm. then people will get jealous or they think you have what they don't have which mm-hmm. is a bunch of crap because you guys don't know i have noisy chihuahuas and a stomach issue <laughs> <laughs> You just look at me talking about this stuff, right? right. Um, but people do send me that kind of, and which is really dumb because I'm just going to love the shit out of you right back. I mean, why not? Well, I will say, Mary, you are someone to be jealous of. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. You're just no amazing. Way. Your work is amazing. And I just well, love, you. yes, absolutely. I just, I can understand. I could see someone. I can, under, I even know I, it doesn't make sense to me. I could definitely see that um, because mm-hmm. power radiates. And when people feel disempowered by your power, then that it very commonly comes out as jealousy. Very mm-hmm. commonly. Um, it is common. It's just, I'm more of a galactic when I say I don't understand jealousy because yeah. Mm-hmm. Go get your own thing. There's a thing for everybody. <laughs> yes, yes. There's so many things. And you That's have right. your own special thing that is nothing even nearly like mine. So it's not, there's nothing, there is no real competition. It's not even real because I can never duplicate yours and you can never duplicate mine. So there's nothing to be in competition with. Oh, it's so interesting. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's just, it's just small little things to adjust, little, little adjustments. That's why once people, I think, get the idea that they're their own CEO and they can make those adjustments, it is really empowering and it's exciting to see mm-hmm. the changes in people when, um, when their higher, because their higher self is putting forth everything they need to know. I'm just like a flashlight. I'm just like, okay, have you considered that? Because yep. your higher self is showing me that. Yep. And until people can listen to their own higher self, which, of course, is totally coming for everybody, mm-hmm. um, then you're going to need a flashlight. And I tell you, I, I use my own personal flashlights all day. I, I listen to what people say about me because how can you see yourself as well as another person really can? I mean, you kind of got your inner knowing, but yep. still, I want to I want to know why. I just want to know sometimes. Oh, it's so helpful. It's so helpful. I love readings. I love mentors. I love all of that. I'm like, yes, please show me because I know I cannot see it nearly. They don't have the same attachment to it. I have attachment to it. So that's what makes it harder for me to see it because I'm attached to it. I don't even recognize that they have no, they just see it and they just point it out. And like you said, flashlight, they just put the flashlight on it. That's it. If they don't have any, you know, any attachment to losing that or gaining that or what that's meant in my life and blah, 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 blah. They just show me it. They just say, well, I see this and that's all. And that's what I do for my clients is, well, I see this and that's all, you know, um, but it can accelerate your ascension massively, massively. If you utilize, we all need each other. No one's better than the other. We all just need each other and we can really help each other if we utilize, yes. you know, utilize, put the ego aside, humble down and utilize each other to assist each other. It's incredible the, the lengths that we can get. You know what else we need? <laughs> My guides tell me I can say it. Okay. Do I still have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. We need we need people with differing opinions. Oh, That's gosh. Thank you, Mary. Because if <laughs> because if you hear there are some teachers out there saying if you don't believe, I don't want you on my feed. Or I, I, I mean on my page. I and I have to tell you, you gotta wonder why that is. Yep. Because I I did not chuck anybody unless they were absolutely horrible to me personally. <laughs> 
<laughs> this whole time. Did right. I chuck? Did I chuck people? Actually, in the last few years, I had to to preserve my own self because they were very detrimental because of being so angry or horrible one mm-hmm. way or the other. Mm-hmm. Did I learn from that? Yes. But I'm just talking about people saying, if you don't vote my way. If you don't believe this, if you don't say yes when I say yes and no when I say no, then you can't be around me. Man, that is short-sighted. In my mm-hmm. humble opinion, short-sighted. Because I tell you, I pretty much left everybody be when everybody was mad about a bunch of stuff over the years. Uh-huh. And I tell you, it's it. have I changed my opinion? I have to change my opinion every day. I hope everybody out there will hear this for what it is. Is that we are being, we are being shown some things right now that may make our opinion change. Are we so rooted in believing one thing that we can't see somebody else's perspective and get something out of it? I hope not. I hope right. Not. Because that's what I heard the other day. I woke up and when I, you know how it is when they'll give you something right when you wake up, you know? Yeah. I heard, I heard you can change your mind. So mm. I sat with it for like a day and I was at the store and I went, oh my gosh, I know what that means. I get it. <laughs> I, came, yeah. I get it. And mm. I came home and I told my husband, I've changed my mind about that. And this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And so he was pretty surprised about it because it was something that I had said that I wasn't going to do. But wasn't going to change uh, my mind on. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to change my mind on that because I'm a human and I get to say whatever yeah. it was I was thinking. I have no idea what I was thinking. But all of a sudden I went, well, because it's really important to him. Can I change my mind? Yeah. It doesn't cost me anything. Right. It just made, made him happy. He was like, well, thanks. And then. There you go. Right. Exactly. It wasn't that huge of a thing. It's a little thing, but still it meant a lot to him. Well, and, and like, even in general, like as a collective and and we are going to start wrapping up here, but I just want to say that like as a collective, it's almost like, especially the turmoil that we've been in for the last, you know, year or so, if you've stated that this is how you believe then you can't go somewhere else because you're already on this team and on this side or whatever. And it's like, no, you are allowed, like you said, to change your mind every moment, really not Mm -hmm. even just every day, every single moment, any moment I can change my mind. I have the sovereignty and the liberty to do that. Um, And I can also be different, like embracing each other's different. That's what makes us this whole big, beautiful organism that we are, is that we're not the same. And so um, I was actually just watching, um, Phil Good was talking about this the other day, about really honoring, not shaming one another for where we are different and honoring Mm -hmm. and embracing that difference because it's what makes us this whole being. And, And in my personal perspective, is that the only time that I find myself shaming or disliking or, or, you know, rejecting another person's difference is because I'm rejecting that part in myself. I'm rejecting something within myself that I feel is different or weird or odd or whatever it may be. And so then I'm rejecting them for being different or odd or whatever it may be. Whenever you really embrace the wholeness of all that you are, you embrace the wholeness of all that this is. It's one in this, it's a mirrored thing. And so I keep trying to say this to people, maybe eventually, you know, we'll all understand what I'm trying to say right now, but, or maybe we won't, you know, but um, it's in my perspective, I think that it's just a reflection of what's going on within yourself, whether it's fear or shaming one another or, you know, being judgmental towards towards someone's differences or, you know, being held, holding on or attached to some opinion that you have or something, whatever it may be, it's just a reflection of what's going on in, in your world. Oh man, I wish we could talk so much. I have like so many questions for you, Mary. Okay, real quick. Yeah. I want to, I want to just touch this one thing and then I try not to make it go over an hour. So we'll try our best here, but I just love okay. your mind. I want right. to pick it apart. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy <laughs> okay, so real quick, can we talk about fear? I'm so curious on your opinion around this because, or maybe I shouldn't share my opinion first. Maybe I should just <laughs> see what you have to say. But I'm just curious on like, on like being in fear, like pointing out, you know, like this is something you, you need to watch out for. These kind of people or things you need to watch out for, whatever. I'm curious, just before I give my opinion, share, share yours. Okay. Well, fear is an attractor. So when you hold fear, you attract. So without saying too much, um, 
you can attract all kinds of stuff by staying in fear. Mm -hmm. So um, it's one of the things. So I have anxiety, which I now know was from a specific trauma. And so I've had to do all kinds of things for that. Right. And so I find that when I laugh and cut up and that's why my husband's so beneficial to me because he and I fight in a certain way, you know, we'll point something out about each other and then he'll go, can't you just be somebody different? And then we just laugh. <laughs> that's how we, that's passes for fighting in our house. But as far as like fear, I, I tend not to hold fear. That just isn't my thing. So when I, I can pick it up on people pretty easy because your energy looks a certain way. You can be so scared about certain stuff that it'll hack your energy down to nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. And then you'll have some great energy work and you'll be open and flowing and you'll start thinking about that fearful thing, go down to nothing. It always comes from trauma, seems like, can come from a family line right. thing, mm -hmm. can come from one big bad thing you had, you had a great life and then one really traumatic thing. I mean, it's so interesting and it's really specific for each person. Everybody has their own little fear button. And if you can figure out your fear button, oh my gosh, you can fly you can fly when you let that go. <laughs> okay. So what about, what about the aspect of like, you know, how people, you know, I mean, I have my, my beliefs that I will maybe state after I want your opinion first, but how we're in a spiritual war and like, watch out for the darkness and like, you know, all oh, those, yeah. like what about, I don't know, to me, it, I feel like it's feeding, it feeds that energy by saying like, watch out for them. And I'm like, you're, literally feed that's exactly what they want <laughs> I'm like, that's literally exactly what they want and you're feeding them and making them stronger every yeah. time that you're warning everyone to watch out for darkness and dark entities and da, 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 da. and i'm like it's nothing to fear everything is safe everything is divinity which means it's all safe it's all god you're really fine we are <laughs> go, we are in a spiritual war yes that's valid but it's gonna the, it's happening either way like it's not even really a war because it's already done. It's already over. Like it's, we're going, we're going in a certain direction and a certain tra trajectory. And we're all, like you said, we're all going to be tapped into our higher selves. We're all going to have this level of awareness. That's just inevitable. Like it's just happening. You know what I mean? I do. And so the way as my mom, our family on mom's side came from Kentucky. And so what mom would say is just keep hell going. <laughs> so there are people out there and there are some big voices that keep talking about this kind of stuff. And that just keeps hell going. Right. So do, will you, will you put down, we put down your rifle mm -hmm. and your vest and decide that you're not going to do that. Can you just be peaceful? Um, and then you'll have nothing but peace. Peace right. is, you'll have nothing but peace. When you decide that you're not going to look around and find out who's wearing a mask and if you're not wearing a mask or, I mean, that's just a small example. If you're not looking around for who's saying this or who's showing up on their own Facebook feed, looking a certain way, come on. So people who are busy, they don't have time for that. They're right? in love and peace. <laughs> love and peace. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of people. <laughs> it's I, the truth, though, It's the truth. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just got the warning finger from my guy. Don't go a little further on that because I could. You know where I'm going with that. I'm not gonna, but what I'm saying is, is if you're in peace, you attract peace. So, you know, the whole of 20 into 2019, 2020 to 2021, I was never challenged on anything. Wow. I really wasn't. I, w I was slimed. All right. Yeah. Challenged about beliefs and different things. No, because I run a peaceful energy and I'm like, you do you, you go ahead and do that and believe in whatever you want to. If it's working for you and you have a peaceful life, you're successful, you're healthy. Oh, well, you're not. Well, then maybe you could do some different things and think in a different way. Right. 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 Because constantly I'm thinking and I'm asking my guides to point out where am I full of crap? Okay. What do I need to loosen up on? Um, what am I holding on? That's just fear. But I do believe there's controllers. What, who are all those controllers? I'm not sure about all of them, but I'm not into it. I'm right. not going to play the game. I'm right. not going to play that game. Yep. It's yep. a game. It's a video game. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a video game. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciated that. Um, and just appreciate you being here in general. Thank you so much for just this. This is such a good episode. I'm so grateful to have this on the podcast. Um, if you would, before you leave, um, before we hop off, can you just give everyone just a little bit of an overview of what all you offer if they feel called, you know, after listening here to work with you? Yes. So I do um, 
a podcast called Metaphysical Meltdown, and this is reminding me how much I miss it, and I'm going to start doing some more of those. So if you like my droning voice, go to YouTube. You can find me under my name, M-A-R-I. B E C K M A N on YouTube, a lot of radio, you know, radio episodes and podcast episodes where I took a bunch of time and interviewed people, which was really fun. Um, so if you want a reading with me, I also do that. Best way to find that me is uh, marybeckman.com. I'll drop your link yes. in the show notes. I'll okay. drop that website. <laughs> yep. You guys will find okay. it in the show notes. And then you can find my book um, in different places. You can go to Dosey Blant, D O C E. Second word, B-L-A-N-T, publishing. Or you could go to target.com. You can go to amazon.com. It's, can it's they get to it there. from your website? Um, I think so. Uh, it's that, that website is, uh, talks about the class, definitely. I don't know. You know, we were just talking about that. Um, I think you can't figure out the book quite yet. It's going to happen. And then you'll just be able to go bink and order it. Okay. But for now, if somebody wants it, um, just get a hold of me, um, marybeckman.com, or it tells you how to text me and all that. And text email is my and best. Stuff. Okay. Text is my best. Okay. I have my phone number and it's on there. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mary. It's been such a thank wonderful you. joy talking with you and such an honor to have you on the podcast. Um, and as far as the listeners, I will see you guys next week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Go check Mary out. She's the bomb. And I will see you guys next week. All the love. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Please subscribe, leave a review. And if this was impactful for you at all, please share it with others. This is how we can help each other. Much love and namaste. Namaste.